Today I'd like to continue our discussion from last time uh, where we took a multi-sim schematic and we took it to Ultiboard to make an actual circuit board out of it. If you remember last time we left off with this simple voltage divider with analog input AD0 as monitoring the voltage to the uh, Arduino Uno. Excuse me, if you go up to transfer, alti board, forward annotate to alti board 14 or 13, depending upon your version. All right, I already had it open once, so let's continue. Your alti board file should open up with your new components on there. You can drag and drop and select these components, move them around. We can drag them onto the circuit board. All right, so before we get started on routing and placing traces, let me show you a little bit about the menus. You can either select or deselect what you are capable of picking up on the circuit board. So for example, if we don't want to move our parts anymore, we can turn off that selection. If we were to route our traces and say, oh, we didn't like that because it was the wrong trace size, we can turn off enabling attributes. Uh, and selecting the components. We can select all the traces and then delete them out. So that's what those buttons do up there. Similarly along the side here is the design toolbox where you have the various layers that are active on your drawing. The top layer, bottom layer, keep in and out layer which is uh, layers that you don't want to place traces in so the auto routing feature will stay out of those areas silk screen both top and bottom solder mask top and bottom 3d info uh, if you're going to do the 3d view so let's say 3d preview gives you a little preview of what your board looks like If your button is grayed out, let's say we're going to gray out the silk screen, that means nothing on here is selectable. The rat's nest layer are just what they call rubber band lines. Lines that snap directly from one point to the other point in your net list. So this node here is connected to ground. Up here we have various selections where you can add text, specify its size, color, where it's located at. You can draw a line or series of lines. Polygon, which ends up being copper layers. They don't have to be connected to anything, but they can be. And they're all get being placed on the layer that's selected over here. The follow me only works on a copper top, bottom, or one of the inner layers. You can do up to four layer board. The follow me just simply selects a node and you can manually plot a trace to the other node. Control Z of course undoes everything. Another important thing to note 
are your design rules. The DRC or design rule check should be located options PCB properties. Under the copper layers, you can determine if a layer is can be routed by the auto router. So if it's a single sided board, you can turn that off and say, okay, just route traces on the bottom layer only and not the top. And the DRC, the design rules, this tells you whether you're using millimeters or inches. I prefer inches. And it allows you to select different clearances and trace widths. Now these are the default settings. You can go in and change them at any time. I prefer to use multiple clearances. So in the design rules, the defaults are 10 thousandths traces. I prefer to have at least 15 thousandths if I'm going to do the work in the electronic shop with uh, clearances to the traces and pads it'll be at least 15 thousandths. Generally I like to use multiple clearances it just gives me a few more options and for those who like millimeters you can go over to grids and units and change to millimeters, micrometers, nanometers The DRC or design rules is what the schematic or the circuit board is checked against when doing the auto routing. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and auto route this board. And as you can see, it's done 10,000 traces with 10,000 spaces. These little circles here. These are indicating that we are violating some of the design rule checks. We're saying we're too close to our power pin. You can go ahead and just manually move those around. Or rerun the, the routing. Um, or you can go into the nets and change some of the clearances here. Let's say we want to be 20 thousandths away. Let's go ahead and change our traces to 20 thousandths thickness. I'm going to go ahead and go up to PCB properties, design rules. We're going to change that to 20 thousandths. With 20 thousandths spacing. Now if we go ahead and reroute this again with 20 thousandths traces and 20 thousandths spaces. If we want to place a ground plane, uh, by default ground is net zero. We can say place, power plane, we're going to do it on the copper top, net zero, and there's our ground plane. If you want to increase some of the uh, clearances, let's say to the copper area, we can go in and change that and make those bigger. Same thing for the pad clearance.
If you want to make just a single trace bigger, let's say it's a power pin, like this one here, we're going to select the entire trace, and that is our VCC. We're going to come down here and make that, say, 50 thousandths. Whenever you do things like this, though, the last thing you should probably do is a connectivity check. And we have some warnings here of pins not being connected, but everything looks okay. And the DRC. And we have no running errors. If you want to make a custom component, you know, let's say it doesn't exist in the database, it's easier to create that footprint here and then go back to AltiBoard and use their component wizard to make the component itself. Um, but the wizard in AltiBoard works great for creating your, uh, your footprint. Let's say we're going to do a through-hole component. Uh, we're going to make it a dip. Actually, let's make it a sip. And we'll say these dimensions can be taken off of your your uh, manufacturer's data sheet. Physical height of the part, uh, pad size and hole size. I like to do a little bit larger annular ring. And then once you're done here, you save this to the database. So save the database as. It'll go in your user's database. I'll just call it test and click OK.